Dave Rubin. Lovely to see you. You're one of those guys that I've seen so much on a screen that it's, that it's refreshing, as you said before, to, to see you finally in three dimensions. Three uh, dimensions. I can be poked and touched and I'm real. And This is why we've got very the gap bizarre. between us. This yeah. is why we've got the gap between us. Um, <laughs> I, we're obviously going to, to spend quite a bit of time talking about the Rubin Report in a second um, uh, and indeed the way in which you got there. But I just wonder how it feels to be the interviewee rather than the interviewer, to, to be staring down the barrel of the gun rather than holding the pistol yourself? Yeah, that might be the question you should be asking me at the end <laughs> because <laughs> so far, so far so good. Yeah, I like doing this. I, I like being on either side of the interview. You know, it's like when I'm doing what I do on the show, I genuinely like sitting across from someone, looking them in the eye and figuring out what they think. I mean, you mentioned a moment ago that you, you've kind of moved away from the left or yeah. whether or not that you've moved... Well, they got rid of me right. and, yeah. Well, let's talk, yeah. let's talk about that. I yeah. mean, you, you are part for, for a time of the, of the, 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 along with the Young Turks. Mm -hmm. You know, progressive liberals, popular progressive liberals, one, one has to say. What went wrong? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, yes, look, I've been a lefty my whole life. I, when I first got into politics was seventh grade. It was during the... or It was seventh or eighth grade during the uh, Dukakis, George H.W. Bush presidential election. And we were running a mock campaign in my social studies class and I was working for the Dukakis campaign. The, he was the liberal, he was the Democrat. And it was so obvious to me that liberals and Democrats were the good guys. They cared about poor people, they cared about minorities. These were the good guys. Republicans or conservatives were cold and they only cared about money and taxes and they didn't care about minorities or anything like that. Um, so my whole life, I mean, I voted for Obama twice. I was on the Young Turks, a pretty far left progressive network. Um, I was part of that thing. And so what changed your mind? I mean, there were a couple moments. There, there were a lot of things just related to accusations that I constantly saw coming from my side that I didn't like. So every argument somehow, everyone that went against progressive think was somehow a racist or a bigot or a homophobe or a transphobe or a name another phobe, like everybody. And I thought, this, this can't be right. Even though I was surrounded by a lot of people saying that, I thought this can't be right. There have to be people on the other side of this argument who have good intentions, who are not the worst of the worst people. So that was one thing, that the arguments became really lazy. Instead of seeing intellectual arguments, I saw just a lot of accusations and, and slandering and slurring. Can I please finally tell the truth about why he left the Young Turks? He wanted to make a six-figure salary to host a 30-minute-a-week show when everyone here, you know, because we work for an independent news, News company was getting paid far less while working 12 hour days. That's why Dave Rubin left the company. And now all of a sudden he's getting funded by the Koch brothers and all of a sudden his opinions are very different. He has no political identity. He is not an honest actor. He is not an intellectual. He is a fraud. That's who Dave Rubin is. I mean, I mean, quite I wish quite I knew how she really felt. Boy, <laughs> that's But no uh, point where to begin, you know, fraud, lazy. Avaricious, you know, immoral, uh, you wanted more money. First off, I never asked for, you know, it's so silly to even, unfortunately, to have to talk about these little nonsensical oh, things. Because I, I, I like talking about ideas, not about people. I never asked for more money. Uh, that's number one. I left. I told them I was leaving and I left. There were no, no negotiations. That's it. Actually, my, my executive producer, who I brought with me, uh, they offered to double his salary if he stayed. So together we would have we would have made more money if we'd stayed. But that has nothing to do with nothing. Um, Does it make you? I would say that. no. It's like it's kind of pathetic, really. I'm not funded by the Koch brothers. I mean, I wish I was funded by the Koch brothers. That would be nice. I wouldn't be wearing H and M underwear. I mean, it's like this is this is this is what I'm talking about. It's that sort of endless hysteria, attacking people, attacking motives. Nobody's interested in that anymore. I really don't think people are interested in that. Well, let's, let, let's talk then about, about the Rubin Report. Hundreds of thousands, potentially millions, in fact, of, of, of subscribers on YouTube, certainly in terms of views. You're, 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 you're way, way up there. If you were to describe the program to someone who'd never seen it before, what would you say? We're trying to talk about big ideas in an honest, open way. That's it. I mean, I want to sit with somebody, and as I said before, I want to go, what, well, what do you think? Why do you think it? And what do you really think is wrong right now? I mean, something is wrong. It is very clear that within the way that we in the West right now can discuss ideas, something has gone horrifically awry. We are ha we're coming to a place where we're just at loggerheads all the time. But do you feel that you're part of the, um, the echo chamber that you yourself have, have criticized a number of occasions? You look at the people that you've spoken to regularly, they do seem to be 
all, well, largely from the same political place. You mentioned Sam Harris, yeah. uh, your Shapiro's, your Peter. Well, Sam, your, your Harris and Shapiro disagree on literally everything. I mean, there's not one topic that they agree on, but, from, uh, but, from existential uh, issues to abortion to taxes to everything down the road. I wouldn't call it an echo chamber at all, actually, unless maybe I'm misunderstanding the question. Well, I mean, here's a point that yeah. you might disagree with. I mean, we... Obviously, I'm down to disagree. We, we, we can do it. You yeah. and I both do yeah. a, a similar job. I work in the mainstream media and you work elsewhere, sure. but we both predominantly are interviewers. I just wonder, when you look back at an hour or two hours in the company of Marilyn Yiannopoulos and yeah. Jordan Peterson, do you actually think you challenge them enough? Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah. you, but you, you, you generally share their views and have talked about it. These are ideas that interest you, excite you. Well, Jordan's ideas I genuinely, mm -hmm. generally do share, mm -hmm. for sure. Milo, I don't know what his views are anymore, that it's whatever. But I would say that sitting down with these people, the only way you're gonna figure out what they think is to let them speak. So there's an odd thing now that if you sit down with someone, that that means you automatically endorse them. I, I just don't, I just don't buy it. forensically probe someone, yeah. though. And I just wonder whether that happens. I mean, actually, this, this, this yeah. next clip I just wanted to play was produced sure. by someone who is a self-confessed fan of the Rubin Report. But yeah. he, he produced a little parody um, in, in Carter. Oh, I love we'll this, have a yeah. Quick look. yeah. How does it feel to be non-regressive today, Sam? At the present moment, uh, the most crucial point uh, for us to focus on is... I agree with that. Uh, you didn't let me finish. Regressive. I agree with that. Honestly, Dave, if you believe that you can just agree with your guests on everything they say, you're totally... I agree with that. It's like, if you're not embodying the mythos of the archetypal hero by metaphorically dying, you're never gonna kill the snake man, let alone rescue your father from the underworld. Who has a billion of anything? Nobody. It's absurd. I agree with that. I don't know about you, but I think the, Sh the Shapiro was absolutely spot on in that. I mean, wait, was that Ben actually doing the voice there? <laughs> well, first off, I love that. I mean, the idea that, you know, somebody's making a, a funny parody video of me that's been seen by a million people, it's like, whoa, we must actually be doing something that's, that's relevant. I think to, now I understand, I think, what your original question was, which I guess is the nature of what this, what this parody is, which is that everyone these days on television, probably in this very building, they bring people on and they fight, and they fight out fake points, and there's no actual conversation, and really the people talking usually have no idea what they're talking about, and that's why they're brought on, and it's quick bites, and it's usual drivel, actually. If you, if you watch CNN, an hour of CNN, you will be dumber than when you started. Can we talk about a couple of the, the, the issues that do seem to crop up time, time and again sure. on the show? Uh, culture wars, for example. Uh, identity politics is the one, that, uh, the one that fascinates me. I mean, you, you're, 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 you're out as a gay man. Yeah. And it, it, it strikes me as slightly strange that you rail so much against the concept of identity politics when it is pretty clear from having watched you for quite some time that, that your sexuality is central to who you are. I, I don't think it's cent uh, central at all, actually. I mean, I happen to be gay, but I don't use that as a cudgel or a bludgeon against anyone that I'm arguing with. I mean, this is why I talk about the individual all mm -hmm. the time. The only thing that matters, it has no, whether you're gay or straight or black or white or female or trans, those things are actually completely irrelevant other than your thoughts. Your thoughts and actions are what matters. So I don't come at anything from I'm a gay man, so this is... Oh no, is but it's cumulative. I, it's cumulative though. I'm not suggesting that your sexuality defines entirely yeah. who you are, but it clearly has an effect. And, and, and what fascinates me is that you, you, you hate, you, I wouldn't, I, not hate perhaps. Well, I that hate identity true. politics if yes. that's where you're gonna go. Yeah, I do hate identity politics because identity politics is what takes away your capacity as an individual to think. Identity politics is what groups us. You're black, so you should think this. You're gay, so you should think this. You're Muslim, so you should think this. And then it puts people in this oppression Olympics. Mm -hmm. And this is where they, this is where intersectionality, oh, your oppression and my oppression, together they're stronger. But actually that com causes this sort of competing interest. But, but identity politics, of this type of person should get this and we should take from this person and give to this person and the, that we should hate more than anything else the straight white male is incredibly dangerous. It's actually the complete antithesis of what our founding documents were about. Well, with, 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 a, you know, with a straight white male in the White House, it does seem like they're doing okay these days. Well, I'm not saying they're doing okay or not doing okay. I mean, I, I, I would judge Trump as an individual the same way I would judge 
anyone else as an individual. Okay, so where then do you put yourself on, on the political spectrum? Because, for, you know, you do what, if you watch the Rubin Report, you might be led down the path of suggesting that you're on the right of centre. I would say now, there's no argument that I could really make that would identify me with what the left is now, with what the progressive movement is, with what the democratic socialist or socialist democrats are. That has nothing to do with any of the ideas I care about. If, if people that are part of that want to talk to me respectfully and without personally attacking me and things of that nature, I'm happy to have those conversations. But I'm not part of that. So whether, whether I left them or they shifted so far that the Overton window moved that they left me out, you know, I think it's a little bit of semantics. But, but either way, what I can tell you is that I consistently find conservatives and people on the right open to having discussions. They're willing to debate abortion. They're willing to debate legalizing uh, marijuana or talking about gay marriage. And they're willing to do it respectfully. And I see virtually none of that on the modern left. When you say that, what do you mean? What, that they're just angry? That they're unwilling to concede that well, there's something if, wrong in their position? Yeah. Then what? I mean, well, because if it strikes me that you're kind of the same. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I just don't, I don't understand the question really. But uh, they, that generally speaking, if your default position is that the people you disagree with are bigots or racists or mm -hmm. homophobes, well, then you don't have to grant them any leash in a conversation to figure out what they think. You Aren't think some of the people they identify as bigots exactly that, though? Well, if... I mean, if you'd have to give me an example, if you told, if you told me that someone was did not want black people to have certain rights by the nature because of the nature of the color of their skin, that person is a bigot and should be called a bigot. If you tell me that someone believes in low taxes and that makes them a bigot, well, now we've got a discussion to have about that. So. I don't see generally people on the left being willing to engage in that set of ideas and that and that that type of discussion. The left, by and large, in what it has become now through academia and the media, is is pretty homogenous when it comes to thought. They love diversity. Mm -hmm. They love the idea of diversity. We love black people. We love gay people. All of this, but they don't like diversity of thought. I mean. Go be, a, go be a black person and try to deviate from the, the progressive groupthink and see how quickly they will turn against you as a black person. Go be a gay person and say anything against what the progressives want you to believe and see how quickly they'll show you that they're not really for gay people. Be a woman, be, be Nikki Haley and ha happen to be a Republican woman who I, who I think is pretty spectacular and see how quickly they're not really for women because you can't be for groups because every time you say I'm for a group, I'm for gay people, I'm for black people, I'm for women, well every time a gay person or a black person or a woman thinks differently than you want them to think, well, then quickly you're going to have to purge them. So that, that really is the essence of intolerance. Uh, well, let's return to that very first question. How yeah. does it feel to be the interviewee rather than the interviewer? Good. I like it. You know, it's, it's even for the stuff that you were challenging me on, it's like this is the point of all of this. This is, the, this is what people want. They don't want these little prepackaged things where we can just fight with each other. And I think in a weird way, some of the pushback on me is people are so dumbed down from watching that for so long that they can't even believe someone could sit there and be respectful with someone else who they may disagree with or may not disagree with. They, they actually can't believe it because they've been spoon-fed crap for so long that when they see something decent, it might be a little off-putting because it's like, what, what is that? I don't remember that. But you know what? You can go on YouTube and you can find lots of interviews from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s done here in the UK, done, uh, done in America, where people used to be respectful. So if we live in a time where everyone's at each other's throats, if, I, if, if the argument is Dave's too respectful or, or agrees too much, I will gladly take that criticism. Dave Rubin, many thanks for being with us. Yeah, my pleasure.